This time around with AMD's second generation Ryzen processors, they have changed things up a little bit, especially compared to the 1000 series, where if you bought the 1800X, you were paying a considerable amount more money than the Ryzen 7 1700. And in fact, the last generation of Ryzen CPUs, all I was recommending were the non-X SKUs. That is, the ones that came in a lot cheaper and offered, in my opinion, the best value for money. However, this time around, you've got the flagship coming in at 329 retail, followed by a $30 discount for the Ryzen 7 2700. Now, between those $30, you get a much better cooler on the 2700X. This is the RGB Wraith Prism Cooler. Not only does it look better, it actually performs pretty well, enabling you to get over 4 gigahertz on all eight cores with the included cooler, which does represent very good money out of the box. The 2700, however, you guys did point me up in a previous video, and it does have a big purpose, and that is because its TDP is lower, it can actually out of the box run a lot better, especially in mini ITX configurations. So I will pull up some numbers here for you guys. You can see the power consumption figures both out of the wall are a lot lower for the 2700 versus the 2700X. Even the 2600 comes in with a significant amount less power draw than the 2600X. So in my opinion, this is what makes the two non-X variants very viable this time around. They're for that person who wants to put it in a new small form factor build and they don't want much power draw and they do want to keep the efficiency as high as possible because in a mini ITX PC, you will get a situation where the VRMs might not be that good on a mini ITX motherboard, but also the airflow could be stuffy in general. So it does make sense sometimes to not always overclock your CPUs. And if you need to save that $30 in both cases, then you can get that with the non-X variants. So today's video is going to be a little bit different in that I'm testing all these CPUs with their included stock coolers as I believe this time around it's much more relevant for someone who wants to buy one of these CPUs and see how it performs out of the box. Because if you know how to overclock, or on the other note, if you know how to undervolt and underclock, then they're really, the, both the eight cores are gonna do the exact same thing, and same with the six cores. However, out of the box, they do come wide a little bit differently. When we pull up the Cinebench scores, we can see that the six core, the 2600, did come in with an all core score of 1237 CB. The single threaded score went up to 158 CB as opposed to the X variant which went up to 1311 and 169 on a single core. Then moving over to the 8 cores, we can see that the 2700 came in with an impressive 1479 CB and on the single core it did score the lowest of all four CPUs coming in with 143 points. Moving over to the X variant, this scored 169 on single threaded scores and also on multi threaded scored 1681, though as I mentioned before, the power consumption was a significant amount more on the 2700X, both from the wall and both in the inbuilt sensors than it was to the 2700. Though of course, what about clock speeds in regards to all these four CPUs? Well, this is where things get a little bit weird because the clock speeds, at least from my testing here, were jumping up and down and they usually sat within a 100 megahertz range. The most I saw out of a single core was the 2600X and also the 2700X coming in with similar of 4.05 to 4.15 gigahertz. However, it was important to note that this was jumping and bouncing between different cores. And when it came to the gaming benchmarks, I did notice that they all scored pretty similar. However, the 2600X did edge out all these other four CPUs. So if it's one thing, if you are on a budget and you are a gamer and you don't want to overclock and you want to go with AMD CPU lineup, then the 2600X may be the best choice for you. Also with the memory, I did lock in DDR4 RAM profiles because if I didn't, there was some insane stuttering. This was testing with a GTX 1080 Ti2. So one thing you will want to do with AMD CPUs is get some decent memory with solid XMP profiles, or if you know how to overclock memory, you will definitely want to do that to get the best results, especially when it comes to gaming. Now, going back to the clock speeds out of the box, uh, XFR Boost technology does do a good job, even with the included coolers. If you want to put on something like an enthusiast cooler, like a H110 from Corsair, then you can expect slightly higher uh, performance, especially with the 2700X, which uses the most power out of these four CPUs. I did see up to 4.05 gigahertz auto boosting on all cores with a H110i. However, when it came to temperatures with these CPUs, you could see that the 2600 
even with its lowest clock speeds here, was performing the worst. That Wraith Stealth Cooler, in my opinion, just isn't fit for the job. It's more appropriate for a four core, even a four core eight threaded CPU from AMD. But with the six core 12 thread, you can't really expect, or at least you shouldn't be expecting too much in terms of overclocking with the Wraith Stealth. Comes in just over 300 grams, as opposed to the 2700X, which is coming over half a kilogram. And then these other two variants here, the Wraith Spire, and you do get the Wraith Spire LED with the 2700, they're coming in close to 400 grams. So if it's one thing to say about the 2600, I do believe it's really only good for out of the box speeds. If you wanna overclock on this thing, then I'd recommend getting a new cooler, even if it be a $30 budget Cooler Master 212, for example. So now the last part of this video was where I went to Twitter and as I was benchmarking these CPUs, I asked you guys if you wanted to see any tests in particular. And the first uh, request was a B350 motherboard tested out. So I did test out the 2700X on the B350 motherboard. There was no problems running this CPU. It boosted up absolutely fine. The DDR4 memory as well, that overclocked to the exact same levels. And in fact, I could even get some HyperX stuff, which was 2133 megahertz, even with the XMP profiles, I got that up to 3200 megahertz on a B350 motherboard. So it depends on the B350 motherboard, but some of them may be bad. They may just need a BIOS update to work properly or at least work at 100%. Uh, but some, at least like the Gigabyte model, they do work really well, especially with the latest BIOS with the AMD Ryzen second generation CPUs. The next question I got asked, of course, was test out memory overclocking. I was able to get 3600 megahertz on the G-Skill Sniper stuff, and on the HyperX stuff, I went up to 3200 megahertz. Keep in mind, I did have to relax the timings quite a bit, but it does go to show that this uh, second generation of CPUs does have a better integrated memory controller, especially compared to the previous generation of Ryzen first generation CPUs. And then besides some other bizarre requests, I did get asked about gaming benchmarks. So I did include a couple of games for you guys, CSGO and also uh, Final Fantasy 15. This just gave us some numbers that I really wanted to see and nothing was really out of the ordinary here. The 2600X out of the box with a GTX 1080 Ti, in my opinion, was performing the best out of these uh, four CPUs. And you're probably wondering why is the 2600X beating the 2700X? At least in CSGO, I believe it's got to do with the level three cache. This has more dedicated to six cores as opposed to this having the same amount dedicated to eight cores. And of course, CSGO doesn't really take advantage of all those eight cores, 16 threads perfectly. And then moving over to Final Fantasy 15, there was some pretty bad 0.1% low results here, but I do believe that has to do more so with the GPU because I was doing this at ultra wide. I wasn't actually testing it at 1440p, it was like 1440p ultra wide. So it was even that much more stressful than a 1440p benchmark. Uh, but the numbers were pretty similar in that uh, benchmark itself. So if you were gonna go one CPU to the other and you were going for high resolution gaming, it wouldn't make that much of a difference at all. Though if you're a competitive gamer and you wanna go with something from AMD, then the 2600X is probably your best bet. Though when it all comes down to it, this time around the second generation Ryzen CPUs all have their purpose to exist. The value for money really isn't changing a whole lot between the X and the non X this time around. And in fact, if all you wanna do is get a motherboard, some decent DDR4 memory and play games, then I'd recommend the 2600X. Or if you're doing content creation and you don't wanna overclock, then I'd recommend the 2700X. Though, if you're going for a mini ITX solution and you wanna keep the power consumption down, then both the 2600 and the 2700 will serve you well. So that extra $30 it's not a whole big difference this time around. And in fact, the 2700X would be my best pick this time around with that Wraith Prism cooler. But if you're just gaming and you want the best performance out of the box from AMD CPUs, then I'd pick the Ryzen 5 2600X. So this time around, I would personally probably pick these three CPUs out of the bunch. I think the 2600 is kind of a little bit overshadowed by these three this time around. Anyway guys, that's about it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below which of these CPUs do you think is the best this time around and why. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Or if you have any questions, of course, just drop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Peace out for now. Bye. Though when it all boils down to it, I just got to change up the outro a, bit, a little bit, boils down. What we gotta do, what we gotta say, what we gotta do. Moving over to the eight core variants, we had. Though back to the overclocks at hand.
Yeah, 